Hi, I'm Chris Kellner. I'm a cerebrovascular neurosurgeon at Mount Sinai. My name is Philip Banov. I'm one of the neuromodulation surgeons at Mount Sinai uh, Health System. Uh, it is our pleasure to be able to talk to you today about the vagus nerve stimulation for stroke recovery. Uh, Dr. Chris Kellner and I have been doing this at Mount Sinai for the past year and a half, and we're excited to share some of this information and some of the data that's coming out of this research. It's important to note that uh, we have no financial conflicts of interest, but the company that makes the device we're going to be talking about is funding a registry, and Mount Sinai is participating in that registry, and I'm the site PI for Mount Sinai, part of that registry. Today, we're going to talk about the data that supports this exciting new treatment for stroke recovery. We're going to talk about the pilot trial. We're also going to talk about the pivotal trial that was published in 2021 that gave us the evidence that supports implanting vagus nerve stimulation for stroke recovery. We're going to talk about the device called the Vivistim that performs vagus nerve stimulation and permits paired rehabilitation, which is the rehabilitation combined with stimulation. That's really the secret sauce to this uh, strategy working to augment recovery after stroke. We're going to talk about the enhanced stroke recovery program and give an example of a patient who's gone through this program, and then talk about the future directions in this exciting field. As some background, the stroke recovery curve unfortunately plateaus as you get into the late rehabilitation phase. As you can see here, from the early rehabilitation, the patients do tend to make progress after the ischemic stroke, and the recovery of body function and activities is significant. But at some point, and patients will hit it differentially anywhere between three and six months, we see that their improvement does not get better significantly. And that is a source of frustration for the medical community and, of course, the patient and the families. And the ideas over the last 10 to 20 years in the neuroscience community has been how can we improve that and how can we continue their improvement past this plateau point. A lot of ideas have recently surfaced as to how to improve patient outcomes. And some of this work is also done at Mount Sinai, including the stent road, uh, which is the work of Dr. Tom Oxley, as well as brain-machine interfaces, as you can see here, the collaboration of human bodies, potentially with machines, to really bypass the blockages that are caused by the stroke to allow us to still function in the world. But what we want to focus today on is the vagus nerve stimulation paired with upper limb rehabilitation after chronic stroke randomized pilot study. So this study right here allowed the placement of the vagal nerve stimulator, and then following that had a significant six-week inclinate rehabilitation pathway where the vagal nerve stimulation actually is triggered together with the movements for these patients. Now, these movements are paired with a very brief stimulation pulse, about a half a second, and it is uh, exceedingly task-specific with high repetitions. The wonderful part about this kind of vagal nerve stimulation for recovery is after those six weeks, the patients can continue still improving because they're able to do home-based rehabilitation and still be pairing it with vagal nerve stimulation as well. The key to some of these evaluations that will come back um, during the course of this talk will be the Fugelmeyer assessment. And you guys can see here that the Fugelmeyer is a movement scale that is scored in a three-point ordinal here. Uh, low numbers are bad and higher numbers are good. And you can see the five domains assessed here include motor function, sensory function, balance, range of motion, and joint pain for a maximum score of 226. For the point of the trial, most of the focus has been on the upper extremity score, and the maximum, as you guys can see here, is 66. So here's an example of a Fugelmeyer change uh, in the vagal nerve stimulation uh, for stroke recovery trial. You guys can see that everyone starts at the baseline, and then you have control VNS, which is the gray line, showing you some improvement, and there's a placebo effect here for sure, um, and then a little bit of a flattening of that curve. Uh, in addition to that, active VNS shows improvement and then continuous improvement past that. And that was statistically significant for the trial itself, and that allowed the blinded pivotal device trial to happen. And that is a device trial itself here. And you guys can see that the Fugelmeyer upper extremity change control group versus VNS group is statistically significant, and it improves as you keep on going through therapy. The definition of a clinically meaningful response was a six-point or greater improvement on the Fugelmeyer score itself, and you guys can see that here. This is a quick review of where we stand right now in the realm of improvement uh, and stroke recovery options that patients have. The past has really focused on uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation as well as direct current stimulation with some successes, 
but still not to the point where the patients or the treatment physicians are happy. The present now includes this new weapon in our armamentarium, this vagus nerve stimulation. And the near future, we'll be offering stereotactic cell cell injections, stentrode, one of the uh, interventions we discussed earlier today, as well as some really exciting trial about deep brain stimulation. And you can see that is focusing on the dentate nucleus and the posterior fossa. We think the future really will involve patient-specific multimodality neuromodulation, including cellular therapy paradigms. After the exciting results of the rehab BNS trial, Vivistim got FDA approval in August 27th of 2021 for the use of paired BNS with this device for augmentation of rehabilitation for upper limb weakness after ischemic stroke. I'm going to tell you about a particular patient who recently went through our program. Uh, we'll call him JN for now. He's a 60-year-old who suffered a stroke nine years ago. So this is not recent. And he had quite a large stroke that left him with uh, inability to move his left side. Uh, over time, he was able to regain some strength to the ability that he could walk and he could drive. But he had significant limitations in his left upper extremity and his left lower extremity. It limited his ability to walk and limited his ability to use his left arm and his left hand. Here's a video of this gentleman prior to the program. And you can see him uh, attempting to move his arm here with some help from the therapist. He does have some arm movement. Here he's kind of looking down a little bit. And you can see his seriousness, his facial expressions. And uh, here he's making the movements with his arm. Uh, he is able to do a little bit, but his movements are quite limited. And his function is limited in this arm. You can see he's not making any individual finger movements. So the procedure we're going to talk about today is implantation of a vagus nerve stimulator and the following rehabilitation that when paired with the stimulator augments upper extremity recovery. This is the stimulator that's implanted. There's the Vivistim battery. And the procedure entails two incisions. One incision is in the neck, and that's for access of the vagus nerve. The other incision is either in the preaxillary area or just under the clavicle. And the battery is placed under the fat over the muscle uh, in the left pectoral area. The Once the vagus nerve is accessed, here you can see the carotid artery. Here's the vagus nerve and the exposure. The leads are wrapped around the vagus nerve and then tunneled down to the battery uh, where they're connected. The vagus nerve stimulator can be removed after a few years or at any time the patient requests. The battery can also be changed in another surgery uh, after three to five years if the battery runs out and the patient hopes to continue using the stimulator. We recently reviewed complications associated with this procedure. This procedure has been performed for over 20 years for predominantly epilepsy and depression. And so the complication profile is extremely well known. Um, and the types of uh, complications that patients experience are most often temporary and associated with either the procedure itself or with activation of the stimulator. And the most common uh, complication noted is hoarseness or voice alteration. And that occurs in almost everybody. Fortunately, that recovers shortly after the procedure. And when the stimulator is turned on, the amplitude of the stimulator can be reduced so that this symptom does not occur. And the same goes for uh, dyspnea and coughing, which are also possible results of the stimulator being activated. Pain associated with the procedure is often well tolerated and uh, subsides after a few days. Um, occasionally, it can last for a few weeks, um, but uh, but it does get better after that. Um, paresthesia around the incision is also common, uh, but improves over time. Um, as you can see, severe uh, complications are extremely rare uh, and not even listed on this uh, list of adverse, the most common adverse events. As we move on to the mechanism of action of vagal nerve stimulation for enhanced stroke recovery, um, we think that this is causing an increase in global neuroplasticity for the patient. As you guys can see, rehab itself does not cause as much of a change in the stroke and contralaterally 
as does vagal nerve stimulation together with acute intense rehab. So we think VNS increases global corticospinal tract connectivity and thus improves motor function. The paired VNS mechanism of action is described here, where you can see that there's a release of specific neurotrans neuromodulators, which facilitate behavioral and physiological changes. And this is task specific practice and uh, encoded together with behavioral relevance, which means that the patients get to learn to use their upper extremity again and get to use it better than before. And you can see over here that there's a significant three to six fold greater recruitment of neurons in the motor cortex on both hemispheres compared to just intense rehabilitation therapy alone. The protocol usually includes significant preoperative testing and in some tenters, even significant preoperative rehabilitation. But this pathway here starts with surgery and then baseline testing and then intense in clinic rehabilitation, that, which is three times a week for six weeks. And there will be 300 repetitions at least per session, which are concordant with the stimulation itself. And then after that, we move into at-home rehabilitation, where again, patients can continue to get better. As you see here, the enhanced stroke recovery protocol here includes six weeks of in-clinic rehab and then an intense six-week at-home rehab, 30 minutes daily, DNS on, but not specifically paired to the movements themselves. So how did our patient JN do? The way we evaluate how the patient's doing, as you heard, is the Fugelmeyer assessment. Prior to going through the program, patient JN scored a 45 on the upper extremity component of the Fugelmeyer assessment. That means he had moderate function in the upper extremity and hands, but he still had significant deficits. This is 45 out of a total of 66 points. Now, after the program, after his initial implantation and six weeks of rehabilitation, with supplementation of the rehabilitation with at-home workouts on his own, where he would turn the stimulator on, perform his workout, then turn it off. He improved his function up to a 58. So that's a 13-point improvement. That is quite a significant improvement over what we expected from how patients did on average in the trial. And that does mean we would consider him to be what is a super responder, which is more than twice the response seen in the trial. He specifically noted, I think I made some real improvements in my arm and my legs. So even though the device was uh, indicated and approved for upper extremity improvement, because that's what was studied in the trial, this patient and others have noted that they have experienced improvement in other domains that they've trained. Here you can see him uh, after the full program. You can see he's able to completely lift his arm up. He's more engaged in his facial expressions. Uh, he has good strength in his shoulder. Uh, and I want you to notice how he's able to individually move his fingers. And that's really something that is not common in stroke recovery. Uh, and these are improvements that he's made uh, many years after his stroke and many years after he plateaued in his recovery. Here you can see his baseline Fugelmeyer assessment of 45 on the left and his improvement after the program to 58. Specific eligibility criteria for this procedure are, uh, there has to be an underlying pathology of an ischemic stroke. There has to be upper extremity weakness of at least a stroke scale of one, uh, but no more than a three. There has to be some movement in the upper extremity. When we're talking about a Fugelmeyer assessment, we talk about uh, 20 to 55 as being the range. Um, and then we talk about there has to be some sensation in the upper extremity. It can't be completely uh, numb. And the patient has to have had no prior vagotomy. Uh, at Mount Sinai, we have introduced the Valor Registry, which is a way for us to keep track of these patients long-term. And we really are hopeful that eventually this will be a multi-center effort because the more patients are included in the registry, the better we're able to look at the outcomes and predict outcomes for future patients. So with this, we would like to thank you. And we hope that this was beneficial. And we really hope to collaborate in the future with you and other centers on vagal nerve stimulation for stroke recovery.